You might recall a senior administration official who was very much anonymous wrote an op-ed some time ago talking about what needed to be done to control Donald Trump. Those on the inside who don't like Trump or even support some of his worst excesses, but are nudging him in the right direction. Well, that official is now back, still anonymous with a book, a warning. And it reveals quite a bit about the the goings on inside of the White House. We're gonna break down some of this. But before we get into the specifics, um, just briefly, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with this person who we can't confirm who they are saying things that they don't have to personally really go on the record about, which I know happens, but now it's a whole book. So what are you worried about? The fundamental that undermining- That they will exaggerate or- Right, but what are you worried about? The fundamental undermining of the credibility of media? That yes. has been happening for quite some time. Yeah. And I would say even if you had the person's name, face, fingerprints, uh, transcripts, video of them having gone through all this, mm-hmm. there would still be a vast attempt to undermine uh, their credibility from the Trump administration, um, which is why I appreciate the concept of this, even though I do agree with the idea that this person, I, I would rather know who it is. I think they should just come out. And we're gonna close out this segment with their reason for why they're not coming out, and we'll review that. But really quickly, I do appreciate this as like an artistic exercise in mm-hmm. from the other side, just throwing out wildly unsubstantiable uh, <laughs> claims about uh, about what happened in the Trump White House because yeah. that's what Trump does on a daily basis. That's true. He did and it this, this is just throwing, like, puking more images into the word cloud. Yes. So uh, why don't we uh, get ready to spew? Uh, the book contains a handful of startling assertions that are not backed up with evidence, such as a claim that if a majority of the cabinet were prepared to remove Trump from office under the 25th Amendment, Vice President Pence would have been supportive. Pence denied this on Thursday, telling reporters, I never heard anything in my time as Vice President about the 25th Amendment, and why would I? Which is not actually a direct, like it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, he's not rebuffing that claim. Not exactly. It's like, uh, why would I? I You absolutely would if you turned on a TV right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, The 25th Amendment, I mean, it is about reasons to get rid of a president. Yes, and And we have a few. And that's just been a giant subject in the media and in the discussion of America, particularly you saying, no, 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 don't get rid of him. Mm -hmm. Um, Though he would love it, I'm sure. I'm sure. And the reason he hasn't heard anything, maybe, is because his head's been in the sand the entire time. Exactly, nobody knows where he is or where he's been. Uh, So, uh, senior Trump administration officials considered resigning in mass numbers. Last year, apparently, so they waited a while in a uh, quote, midnight self massacre to sound. (laughs) (laughs) Ended with Ehrlich uh, to sound a public alarm. told me not to do a midnight self massacre. Oh my God. Uh, To to sound a public alarm about President Trump's conduct, but rejected the idea because they believed it would further destabilize an already teetering government. Yeah, it might. If everybody resigned, it might. I said this last week, just like the idea of resign culture being like, I'm out. I'm, you know, how I'm gonna send a message is to leave so you can go on with your like concentrated sauce of crazy mm-hmm. without me being the one in there to say, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do this. And this in way. fact, replacing me with someone who will agree with you on everything. Right. There's a number of people who were there who previously, after Trump said something ridiculous and the door closed on his way out of the room where he spewed his ridiculousness, there were responsible people in. Uh, Washington and in the White House who said, all right, nobody do what he just said. Yeah. Now, if you get rid of those people, you ha- are followed up, you're, you're left with someone who says, yeah, let's just go yeah, ahead let's and do, do it. it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so uh, a little bit more on the president's temperament from an insider who got to see it, supposedly. The author describes Trump uh, careening from one self-inflicted crisis to the next, quote, like a 12-year-old in an air traffic control tower, pushing the buttons of government indiscriminately, indifferent to the planes skidding across the runway and the flights frantically diverting away from the airport. So I don't know much about the identity of this senior administration official, but when they land on a metaphor, they run with it. Sorry, they fly with it. They mm-hmm. take off and then they soar across America with it. Uh, uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, everybody knows that though. That doesn't take insider knowledge. Right, uh, yeah, and that's just a, a pull quote. They put in articles about it that was meant to convey that exact image, which is why I like this as like performance art yeah. to say, here, I'm just gonna flood with flood the, uh, the airwaves with metaphors. Uh-huh. And that's yeah. that's it. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm fine, yes. Everyone who's been following news lately has felt this. Mm -hmm. Some people would, many people, many reasonable people would say, yeah, that's basically what I've been experiencing. And it's it scares the hell out of me. But Trump supporters would say, yeah, but those planes are all full of Washington swamp creatures mm -hmm. and crash those puppies immediately, please. Yeah. Yeah, that's dark imagery. Uh, okay, so a uh, little bit more in that same vein, I guess, sort of just trying to paint a picture. It is, like you said, performance art. It's like showing up at the nursing home at daybreak to find your elderly uncle running pantsless across the courtyard and cursing loudly about the cafeteria food as worried attendants try to catch him. You're stunned, amused, and embarrassed all at the same time. Only your uncle probably wouldn't do it every single day. His words aren't broadcast to the public, and he doesn't have to lead the US government once he puts his pants on. We have no confirmation that as <laughs> Trump is leading the US government, he does have his pants on. I hope, I so, hope so. Yeah, he sits at that resolute desk, mm -hmm. might not have pants on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another great metaphor. Good job, Anonymous. But that's okay. what, but like, write some kids' books after this. That's what makes me feel, I don't know, man. Like, if, if you're working in the White House, say this is all true and this is actually a senior White House official, as it probably is, or someone at least in the White House. Because I'm pretty sure the New York Times wouldn't have published that original op-ed if it wasn't confirmable that it was someone inside there. But uh, that's what I would do. If I worked in a crazy place, I would come up with tons of metaphors for how <laughs> crazy it is. Mm. Because that's the only way I could stay sane. It would give me just a little creative outlet in yep. an otherwise demoralizing experience. Yeah, it's like a person in long-term solitary confinement carving on the walls to stay sane, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but again, I agree with you. The worst case scenario with Anonymous is not that this person wasn't in the White House. I, that's not conceivable to me. Hmm. But how senior were they? How long were they there? That we can't confirm. Are they still there? Are they still there? Is I, it Kellyanne Conway? Is <laughs> how Kellyanne Conway is it? How many <laughs> Kellyanne Conways are there writing this? I prefer to believe that. <laughs> I, I guess. prefer to believe that it's Kelly and Kanye. I doubt it. And also, this person is giving a critical look at the president, but that does not mean that this person is an objectively good person through some sense or doesn't support some elements of Trump's agenda. But but putting out the book makes it seem like this is a hero embedded in enemy territory. Yeah, but we've all I mean that is the weird that is one of the the central themes of the last four to five years is the in a, in a realignment era. Where you find yourself trying to find, figure out who's on your side. What allies are okay. And misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. And I found myself saying, Nice. Um, I found myself saying, like, oh my God, I want John Bolton to testify I on know. my side. <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Like Anthony Scaramucci right now is speaking truth? Question mark? Yeah. I'm still angry. It's weird. But, but that's the kind of stuff. And I would just like to say that. In terms of various books that have been published, I'm gonna read you some names of books published that were supposed to be bombshells that changed the game. The Devil's Bargain about the Trump mm -hmm. White House, Fire and Fury, mm -hmm. It's Worse Than mm -hmm. You Think, Trump, the Trump, uh, which one's the David K? It's Even Worse Than You Think, What the Trump Administration Is Doing to America by David K. Johnston. Oh, um, Killing the Deep State, that's one on his side. I, I would assume so, yeah. Liars, Leakers, and Liberals. That's Judge Jean Pirro. That's Pirro. And now it is, yes. Unhinged, Under Fire, Fear, and Team of Vipers. So I think I know where they're going with the team of vipers. We've had, like yeah, like probably Top Gun. So <laughs> team of vipers though is like the, the imagery cometh. we've had. You've read two metaphors. There's mm. entire books with titles that are metaphors. Yeah. Have those images and those substantiated first accounts okay. of experiences in the White House, have that changed anything? Yeah, no, we're good now. Oh, I didn't know. We're good. Sorry, we're getting I was better. too busy reading. So really fast, really fast. So he says that Trump uh, used a Hispanic accent to say, we get these women coming in with like seven children. They're saying, "Oh, please help, my husband left me. They're useless. They didn't do anything for our country. At least if they came in with a husband, we could put them in the fields to pick corn or something. That is very believable. It's not gonna change anyone's mind. Um, he said at one point, can we just get rid of the judges? Let's get rid of the expletive judges. There shouldn't be any at all, really. I buy that too, but it's probably just hyperbole, who knows? He says that Trump um, 
A lot of people spending time with him get uncomfortable by what they witness because he stumbles, slurs, gets confused, is easily, irrita easily irritated, has trouble synthesizing information or pronouncing what I just said. Not occasionally, but with regularity. And yeah, we've all noticed weird things that he's done where he's walked on the tarmac in a random direction and he's been confused about what he was saying. Um, but also on the other hand, corn pop. So mm -hmm. uh, we've all got issues. And uh, But finally, really fast. He says, I've decided to publish this anonymous, he or she, I guess, it could be Kelly and Conway. I decided to publish this anonymously because this debate is not about me, it's about us. What are you taking that from Bernie Sanders? It is about how we want the presidency to reflect our country, and that is where the discussion should center. Some will call this cowardice. My feelings are not hurt by the accusation, nor am I unprepared to attach my name to criticism of President Trump. I may do so in due course. Well, it's been a while. Who wrote the primary colors? It was like, uh, I forget, but there was a book about the the experience from within a essentially fictionalized version, but based on very apparent reality of the Clinton campaign. Mm -hmm. It started out as anonymous. It turned out it was more profitable in the long run for that person to get up, uh, get a lot of PR under the anonymous label, then reveal yeah. themselves. Then it became a movie with John Travolta, and maybe this will too. And Kellyanne Conway. So consider that a warning, but one you can't really verify. Speaking okay. of a warning, oh, that's what you were doing there. I did. Got it. I'll hammer out the love between the brothers. That's what I was thinking. I don't know what that is, though. It's a song. It's like, I'll hammer out danger, I'll hammer out a warning. We still going? I guess so. I was just going to let you, I was going to see how long is Brett Ehrlich. You know when what we I'd come like to back, do? I'd like to end it with Ehrlich, actually. When, okay. we, when we come back, we got an interview with. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.